Hello everybody. Welcome to NukeGen. This is a texture map generator that I made to speed up uh, you know, texturing nucleuses and scenes. So when it opens up in Substance Player, the default uh, in Substance Player is 512 by 512, which is pretty low resolution. Um, so there's a bunch of presets saved here that are more like instead of 512, 2K or 4K. So 2K spherical uh, looks like this. And in the Substance Player, um, and this is the version uh, 2022, uh, 3.0, uh, the default material here is Adobe Standard Material, and if we hit the Edit button, and then we go into our uh, Tessellation Factor and increase that, this is our, our Sphere Primitive. Um, and then if we adjust our height to something like a 3, then you can start to see you're, you're getting some uh, displacement on this. And, you know, you can go like crazy with the height scale or don't have to have any height at all. And we're using this sphere, the sphere primitive. And the thing to know about this sphere primitive is the way that the UVs are, are laid out on it. So to demonstrate that, I'm just going to take the tessellation factor back down and do a display wireframe. And you can see how this is a uh, like your standard sphere in Cinema 4D. And it wraps together like this. Um, and if, of course, this is our tessellation factor. If we bring this up, you can see what happens. And I'll turn off the wireframe. So the way that this nuke gen was designed is to use a, uh, a polar coordinates filter on these two poles to fight this uh, pinching that happens. And I'll show you what that pinching looks like. So the top and the bottom are, are kind of stretched out like a polar filter does. Um, and that's true, spherical UVs. So if I turn it off, then you see that uh, distortion goes away. And what you end up getting is this pinching at the, the top and the bottom. And you know, and if your shot is only coming into like here, then that's, it's not a big deal. Uh, but there is that, that pinching at the poles. So what I did in uh, Substance Designer is I used the polar filter, um, but it's not perfect because in Designer it just makes the top of the image polar and it doesn't do the bottom. So I had to flip it and then kind of like blend it in the middle. So there's a little bit of a seam in the middle right here that is sometimes more noticeable than others. Um, so that's a disclaimer. Included in here are a bunch of uh, presets, and I'll just open up these dials here so you can see as we change our presets what happens. Um, so we have a black and white spherical style, and we have a uh, gray overlapping. So this is kind of an example of you know what you can do. Um, we have many uh, pores, spherical, and it takes a little while to generate because it's a 40 by 96 size texture. Um, and also the, the height map here probably should be more like a one on something like this. But you, you can kind of get an idea of, um, you know, the kind of quality you can get. And if you really needed it to be super high res, you could always go to like uh, an 8K but that'll take a long time to generate. And once you're done generating these, you can always just like right click on any of these windows and then save as a uh, bitmap here. And then, uh, so that's, that's something to keep in mind. Also the uh, export as bitmap button, you know, allows you to choose a folder and a format and then all the different maps you want to export all at one time. So that's also handy. And most of these presets are using the spherical um, UV mapping. You can customize all these settings here and then save a preset of your own if you like. And then these presets can be loaded into other programs like Cinema 4D. So it's really quick just to work right in, this, in the player, make your preset, save it out, and then open this in another program and, and apply your preset. 
So just real quickly going to go over some of these these features here is nuclear pores number um, this just controls the number of pores on, on the nucleus um, the pore scale you know allows these guys to be really big or or really small and then uh, as you'd probably guess the the random scale randomizes their scales um, and I'll just go back to the preset here and then we have our, our geometric pour and this is probably best seen with the uh, black and white and so this is a fully geometric pour and as I you know scale it back here little by little it turns into a uh, like a top view of a, uh, a PDB pour and you can get a better sense of the resolution if you go down in numbers and this is more of like what it looks like this next is organic surface so I'll just go to the, the 2k gray here and I'll give you an idea what that's all about um, so I'm gonna dial this back to nothing and dial this back to nothing and this is our smooth surface so if we bring our organic surface all the way up to one you can see it in introduces these like ribosome like bumps onto the surface and I'll bring that back down to nothing and if we do our mound surface this is like a little mound for each of the pores and of course if you give it more pores there's going to be more mounds and these settings kind of utilize both of these um, features together and as you would expect we can change our, our color of our uh, nucleus and we can change the color of our pore and uh, if we put our hole opacity down to zero uh, and we change our whole color we can start um, giving a color to the uh, the holes in the in the nucleus and, and to see if this uh, transparency is working we can go to opacity and it should be transparent so to check that we can go into our environment and make it true and yes it is so now we can see through our nuclear pores it's got uh, transparency in there if we go back here then you can see the color we also have a um, I'm gonna put this on to black and white again we have this uh, random dark and light pores it randomizes the darkness of the pores um, so it gives a little bit of variation to the the darkness of the pores here um, here's our roughness slider and I'll uh, turn on the roughness so as we bring up our roughness it increases the roughness on the uh, surface here and then we have our AO amount which is seen here so it's at one here here it's at nothing just gives a, like, a little bit extra punch and our metallic amount is just a doesn't have a map associated with it it's just a, a straight solid color that either goes up or goes down I think that about covers it for the player and next thing I'd like to do is just show you um, how this looks inside of cinema and some gotchas to look out for uh, there's going to be a cinema scene file as an example for reference so let's jump into cinema next so here we are inside of cinema and uh, I'm gonna go to my uh, substance asset manager and I've loaded in um, three nuke gens I've given each nuke gen a, a different name so I can have different versions of it in inside the cinema file and uh, you know so inside here if I wanted to choose a preset I could select this and then uh, apply a preset and browse the preset uh, and once these guys are imported in here 
they automatically make a, um, a cinema standard material and uh, standard workflow is you take this cinema material and if you want to make it into a redshift shader you go to um, I believe it's materials utilities tools convert materials or convert and replace materials so if you hit the convert materials on the cinema 4d standard it's going to make a redshift version of this cinema material looks like redshift starting up here for me and the gotcha to know out to, to know out for the gotcha to look out for here is when it makes this conversion for some reason it makes the redshift displacement scale at 10 and it really just needs to be one and in this example file I, I did that process set it to one and then I went through and um, connected these outputs here into a new standard material that has the um, the random walk scatter to it. Currently Cinema doesn't use standard material, that might change. Um, uses the old redshift material. And uh, the only other thing I did different was um, I set up my own AO texture and put it into the overall color. And you know the way I did that is I went into the, the integration here that comes in um, went down to the basic shader and then and here I chose uh, ambient occlusion because this doesn't come in automatically so those are the two different things that I had to do here and then hooked them all up inside the standard material um, and as you can see there's a, uh, a hexahedron sphere in here and this uses the um, the non-spherical UV pattern uh, and if we go to the, the hexa material, the way I like to work with it in cinema is I'll have the old mm, standard material in here just because the interface is easier to uh, navigate instead of drilling down into the redshift. Um, and once I'm in here, you know, I can unscroll this guy and even here it's kind of buried deep in there, but once you've exposed it, you can change your your nuke gen substance settings and it'll update on the fly in here so this one has the spherical uv option unchecked and it works with the hexahedron sphere um, and these guys are the standard spheres uh, as you can see how they're coming together here at the poles and this is the hex hexahedron if we do a layer color, we'll get to see the difference between the, the sphere types. Yep, and that about wraps it up for overview of NukeGen. I hope you find this utility useful in your work. I've already been using it in mine, and enjoy.